today we on the registration list we have 164 uh, participants. Uh, the largest fractions are uh, represented by professionals of science and policy and management, but we also have today also with us representatives of industry and NGOs. Um, we will, uh, during this uh, uh, brief session, we will introduce the main ideas behind the uh, strategic research and innovation which uh, agenda which we call Banos Sriya, and we will share reflections from several key policy executives. And if time allows, in the end of the session, one hour long session, we, while wrapping it up, our panelists will answer some questions submitted through the question and answer facility. So let's try to be concise uh, to, to allow a short uh, dis discussion uh, segment in the very end. But before uh, we start, I, I wish uh, I, I have a, a one most pleasant task today is to give a credit and congratulate each and every person who contributed to the creation of the Banos Sria throughout exactly two years, 24 months, we have been working on, on this very important document, the background of the future uh, research program. Uh, in spring 2019, Swedish Research Council formas led us jointly, uh, led us in jointly defining the scope and the framework of the agenda. And at the same time, uh, our partners at Ulich Foundation in Germany were analyzing the relevant research and innovation priorities of the countries surrounding Baltic and the North Sea. And as soon as the priority directions were established and the specialist international drafting team commenced its work. At different times together, more than 30 experts were involved. A series of targeted stakeholder consultations began by a dedicated workshop at the annual science conference of ISIS, International Council of Exploration of Seas, one of our four strategic partners. And in early spring of 2020, the pre-draft was already ready and, and it was thoroughly discussed at the summit stager consultation event, strategic orientation workshop or SOW as we, we call it. This workshop remained in our memories uh, for, will remain in our memories for a long time because actually we were forced to, to change the format from the, from the real meeting to the online in, in a very short time. But the outcome exceeded our expectations. During two days of the workshop uh, on the last day of last, uh, uh, last year's March and the first days of April, we received enormous amount of valuable input from total of 120 participants, including also an advisory board led by our strategic advisor, Kan Kaisa Kononen. It took another year to consider implement and implement all st suggestions and fill in the, the discovered gaps. And finally, on 10th of May of this year, the steering committee of Banos Coordination and Support Action signed off the agenda for publication. I wish uh, to thank mostly the, our Banos Secretariat uh, who performed in the best traditions of a calm, cool, and most efficient performance during this the time of development of Banos Sria. But the staff member deserving today the loudest round of applause is, of course, my colleague Carolina Koho, the first author of the Sria and the heart of the whole work. And I'm happy that Carolina is joining today, hosting the, the, the event. And the floor is yours, Carolina, now. Thank you very much, Andres. And also a warm welcome from, uh, from my side. And it is indeed a very warm welcome here in, in Helsinki this morning. We are getting some record temperatures for this, this time of the year. Um, I will uh, dive directly into the pragmatic content of the, of the SRIA. And I will try to highlight some of the main, main aspects of this uh, quite bulky document in the end. You will all have an opportunity to download the complete three at the end of this, this uh, uh, webinar today. So then you can look into to more details, more details where you, where you find most, uh, most interesting. Mm. 
No, it's going to be at next one. Good. No, it's not changing. Sorry, we have some reason it's not. Okay, now it will. That's okay. Okay. So um, the the bonus tree, uh, uh, we um, we have derived three strategic objectives for the for the bonus tree, and um, basically these three strategic uh, objectives uh, aim to deliver new solutions and knowledge for the better management of the northern northern European uh, seas. And these three strategic objectives are the healthy seas and coasts, sustainable blue economy, and human well-being. And at the center of the of the three and the strategic objective is the uh, uh, ecosystem based based management. But um, uh, also, this is uh, uh, defined by three additional attributes of which uh, uh, which are in the very much in the scope of the of the Barnostria, which are the climate overarching impact of climate. So climate change is, of course, impacting uh, all of us and it cannot be neglected. So climate is very much at the center of the Barnostria. Uh, also the ecosystem well-being and the diversity. And of course, the Barnostria is also defined by its uh, um, geographical scope, the Baltic Sea and the, and the North Sea. If we then dive a little bit more into the details of the, of the Barnostria, these three strategic objectives are also very much underpinned by additional nine uh, specific objectives that are all, all together um, uh, enabling the green transition uh, of the, of the Europe, uh, European blue, blue economy, while ensuring the healthy seas uh, and coasts and the biodiversity is preserved and also supporting the human well-being and the citizens' uh, well-being in, in the region. Um, The Barnostria is very much, uh, um, very much a highly policy relevant, relevant uh, document, and the expected outcomes are also tailored towards the development and in, in implementation of science, science informed policies. So here in the, this slide and in the following slide, I have we have highlighted some of the um, key policies that are very prominent at the moment in the European, global, and also uh, in regional. Uh, policies, but I would like to stress that this, this what we are presenting here today is, of course, a very limited, uh, uh, limited view of the of the policies. So there are many, many more uh, relevant policies that are uh, that are, are, are highly relevant for Barnostria. And uh, uh, here in the focus uh, is the uh, European Green Transition. Uh, while we are aiming to deliver a decisive boost to sustainable marine and maritime uh, economy sector and bringing also the research and innovation capacity of the Barnos region uh, to the next level. So in terms of the healthy seas and coast, we aim to enhance the knowledge of the marine ecosystems and its functioning, while also enabling the development of the new solutions and strategies for environmental protection and, and management, while minimizing also the environmental impact of the sustainable uh, blue economy. Uh, in the sustainable blue economy uh, uh, objective, uh, we are <clears throat> looking into novel approaches and, and uh, solutions uh, that will allow uh, the sharing of the, of the seas in the Barnos region in future, uh, also enabling the transition to renewable uh, ocean, ocean energy, uh, sharing of the of the space and uh, supporting the sustainable and smart uh, uh, circular economies. Um, in the human well-being aspect, <clears throat> the new solutions uh, and knowledge will support the, the food security and safety in the Barnos region without overlooking the aspects of climate change and its impact on the coastal ecosystems and uh, the citizens. And here I have also then highlighted some of the links also of course to the uh, global policies so at the top of the agenda at the moment is the sustainable development goals and of course the the decade of the ocean uh, was also <clears throat> launched uh, this this year so Barnostria is highly relevant for the sustainable development goals of course most uh, most prominent uh, goal here is the life life below uh, water but uh, many of these policy goals, sustainable development goals, are highly interlinked and cannot be uh, uh, worked in isolation. So Barnostria is really 
steer towards supporting many of these many of these goals. And although the generation of the new knowledge uh, solution and innovation uh, uh, via implementation of trans uh, transnational research and innovation calls is forcing um, the core activity uh, rising from the ban of uh, strategic research and innovation, uh, it also aims to go, go further uh, to, to develop science-informed policies and decision-making, knowledgeable and prosperous society, and sustainable uh, industry and economy. And in this, this terms, we have developed what we call impact enablers or specific strategies that are targeting uh, uh, these, these objectives that are also very much in the heart of the Banos, Banos Tria. So we have uh, developed all together uh, 10, uh, 10, strate 10 very specific uh, strategies that will uh, look into, for example, how to best uh, incorporate open science, including open access data, citizen science, into the uh, uh, fu future activities of Banos. Um, how can we support human capacity and skills development? Well, how to support innovation, engagement of the small and medium enterprises in the fu future activities and collaboration across funding, funding streams and also um, how to support the policy by best uh, research knowledge synthesis practices. And my final slide today will give you a quick glimpse of, of what we might expect to see uh, in the future. So, while we have been uh, busy implementing the bonus uh, coordination and support action, there have been similar uh, coordination actions and uh, initiatives going on in other regional sea basins in Europe. So we have had the Blue Med in the Mediterranean, the Anchor and the Aura in the Atlantic, and also Black Sea uh, initiative in, in the Black Sea uh, Basin. And all these CSA have been um, in the previous year, all these CSA have been highly supporting the development of the uh, Horizon Europe uh, partnership candidate, the climate neutral, sustainable and productive blue economy. And the Banos Tria has been also one of the key documents in contributing to the high level strategy of the of the blue economy partnership. So we uh, anticipate the Banos uh, uh, Tria to be uh, incorporated largely into the future uh, uh, partnership uh, act, uh, activities and it's likely to be one of the most implementing uh, yeah implementing actions of the Banos Sria. And now back to back to Andris and uh, you would like to invite yeah, let us thank you very much, Carolina. It was, it was, yeah, the, the strategic research and innovation agenda is a huge and, and, and very kind of complex and detailed document, but, but you, you really presented in, in the, the, the overarching philosophy in the nutshell. I think now it's time to introduce our, our speakers of, of today. And, and let's start with the, with those who have, were helping us as a, as a members of the drafting team. Okay, thank you, Andres. So, as Andres mentioned at the beginning, we have had uh, a delightful uh, drafting team working with us uh, very intensely. Uh, this was over 25 uh, international experts. And today, in our panel discussion, we will be uh, inviting uh, a few of these drafting team members. So, we have uh, uh, Professor Christoph Humburg from Coastal Biogeochemistry and Scientific Director of the Baltic Sea Center from Stockholm University. We will have uh, Dennis Lisberg, uh, who is the head of Mar maritime services at the DTU Aqua in Denmark. And then we have Heini Ahtiainen. She's a senior scientist from, uh, uh, from Luke, so the research, uh, uh, natural research uh, uh, center from Finland. And she has also been a project coordinator at Helcom during the work of the drafting team. Yeah, thank you. And I would like to introduce three hierarchical levels of policy maker, making the represented today uh, uh, in our panel, the national, the macro regional and the pan European levels. Uh, first of all, starting from the national level, we have Kert Ferret of Flemish government's Department of Economy and Science. We have Rudiger Strempel, Executive Secretary, uh, Secretary of the Baltic Sea Environmental Commission, Helsinki Commission. Again, another strategic partner of Banos coordination and support action. 
and we have Ivan Conesa Alcolea from, from the DG Research and Innovation of European Commission. But first of all, I would like to introduce uh, again one of our, our partners. I already mentioned that the scope and the framework of the of the uh, uh, strategic research and innovation agenda was was developed by by Swedish Research Council formas and the main worker, the principal uh, investigator there uh, was uh, Dr. Petra Wahlberg and, and Petra please floor is yours, can you start off by elaborating a little bit on the, the core philosophy of the Banosria and th the three interlinked, link, uh, interlinked uh, grand strategic objectives and other features, which, which Carolina already briefly outlined in, in her presentation. Yes, um, good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, in this first task to develop the strategic framework for the SRIA, I worked together with my colleague Siv Johansson and uh, we wanted to have an open and transparent process to create uh, engagement among the members in the Barnes Consortium. And the starting point that we had for this discussion was the bonus publication number 15, uh, the one that we call the propeller document. Uh, with a background and initial program outline. Uh, to encourage engagement, we used a bottom-up approach where all consor consortium members and observers were invited to participate in an online survey uh, and a workshop to identify research and innovation themes. And of course, it was all, they were also invited to comment on, on the drafts. The outcome uh, uh, was, the, uh, were the, uh, was the three uh, strategic objectives that you can see and, and Carolina presented er earlier. And they were uh, further defined with more specific objectives. And in the center of this framework is the ecosystem-based management. And I would like to elaborate on, on this a bit more. Ecosystem-based management is the underlying principle for all EU legislation related to seas and water. It defines the direction for research innovation, and it is an iterative process where scientific knowledge, data, and innovation are presented and visualized to the society so that decision that makers can take knowledge-based decisions and so that we eventually can reach a healthy sea, sustainable blue economy and human well-being. And in turn, the society needs to community, 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 communicate back what research, knowledge, innovation that are needed further. So, but the First fundamental step in this process is to have a common view on what is under the surface, to do a mapping of the sea. And in Europe, we have the EU Directive for Mar Maritime Spatial Planning, and the deadline for all member states, states to develop their own marine spatial plans was the 31st of March this year. And this will be fundamental to be able to reach good environmental status. So this is very good news for the future, and it will also be very important, an important base for the continued cooperation and co coordination between countries, agencies and organizations. Uh, with the start of new research programs and new instruments, such as missions and the UN Ocean Decade, we have interesting challenges interesting and challenging years ahead of us and the prerequisites for the regional seas are different. Knowledge and understanding of the ecosystems and with ecosystems I don't I both mean the societal and the biology. Knowledge and understanding of the ecosystem will be important to deliver excellent scientific research and innovation and therefore good knowledge and understanding about the regional seas will also be crucial. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Petra. Put our video back on. Yeah. 
Yes, okay. I hope that we are now again visible. Yeah, thank you very much, Petra, for, for this really uh, presentation of the main philosophy, the, the main framework of the, of the, of the research uh, and innovation agenda in, in a very, very brief, very compact presentation. I think now it's time to, to, to give floor to those who, who really worked and coordinated the, the work on, on these three big pillars of the, which, which Petra just outlined. Yes. Let's have a look a little bit more in detail in each of the uh, 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 strategic objectives. And um, for this, we will move on to the, the drafting team. And each will get a, a question uh, which has been formulated their specific role and expertise in the development of the strategic research and uh, innovation agenda. So first, I would like to uh, address uh, Christoph Humborg. And uh, his uh, comment uh, or question will be related to the health disease Healthy seas and coasts, and this much very much, uh, um, yeah, uh, also relates to what Petra was just highlighting about the importance of the ecosystem-based management. So, so Christoph, uh, there is a common agreement that enabling the ecosystem-based management in the Baltic and the North Sea region is critically needed to achieve the good environmental status and many associated policy objectives including, of course, the Marine Strategy Framework Directive and UN Sustainable Development Goals. How do you see that the research and innovation outcomes in the Barnostria will support this process? Thank you, Carolina. First of all, thank you that you give me the opportunity to talk today to you. And thank you, Petra, that you gave the definition of the ecosystem approach to management. So in short, we can say how to make use of the coastal system in a sustainable way. And in a historical perspective, so at the millennium shift, it was the ecosystem approach was an academic concept that became the basic idea in almost all environmental policies area and regional seas conventions, HELCOM and OSPAR, but also EU policy, how to use the future coastal ocean to the recently launched UN Sustainable Development Goals that you mentioned already. And here, I would like to say, it got a new boost from a nerdy, let's say, concept and goal that only some experts within environmental policy understood to a must or a survival issue for human mankind. This sounds a little bit dramatic, maybe, but there's today an understanding that it is not only just nature protection what we have to do. It is a necessity to manage our coastal seas that could become a powerhouse for climate mitigation measures, for example. These functions, the ecosystem services will only work when the coastal seas are healthy. And here, Banos critically comes in. We simply cannot afford to treat the coastal seas as dumping sites and sites for over exploitations. A recent report, for example, from the World Resource Institute states that the coastal seas, when healthy and when treated right, they can could contribute with some 20% of the necessary CO2 reductions to reach the Paris, uh, Paris agreements. These are the key area. But what is healthy seas? And here the specific objectives of SRIA comes in. The challenge is now for us scientists is now to translate the fundamental ecological knowledge that what healthy or stable ecosystems are into tangible products that policy instruments can use. We talk much about targets and indicators for good and bad status, and we use color codes or numerical rankings, what's good and bad is. But here we have to go, go a step forward. And here the Banos Sria will make a difference and its research innovation outcomes will deliver tangible products. And we have formulated three specific objectives. First of all, how is biodiversity and climate change and ecosystem services linked? What are keystone species? that have specific function. As an example, seagrass meadows, they can store six to 10 tons carbon every year. This is double as much as a forest can do. These are key areas we have to address in these functions. And we'll do that here in, 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 in Barnos. What are the drivers for high and low biodiversity in the boarding of the North Sea? What key species and what are the functions? What are thresholds and tipping points and we need this knowledge for the assessment, for example, of the 11 descriptors in the Marine Strategy Directives. Thus, Banos will deliver quantitative knowledge. But then the sp second specific objective deals with the understanding of governance processes, linking land, coast, and the sea. We have to take all stakeholders better into account. And here, Banos will create, for example, uh, learning sites, learning platforms. It will look at 
at bright spots, so case concrete cases for adaptive management and environmental and social interactions. So they will look which policy in instruments have worked, which is needed and which failed. So a lot of social science will come in and we are, and also e uh, uh, economy. So we have to evaluate uh, effectiveness also in monetary terms. So this is a second specific objective. And then finally, if we talk about the healthy sea, which is critical for us, not only for nature, but also for human mankind, I would say, we have to set up a system that monitors the health status of coastal ecosystems. And here is the big word, uh, artificial intelligence dealing, uh, handling big data. And we really can talk about big data because monitoring strategies can make much more use of uh, remote sensing. We have underwater landscapes, atlases, for example, in the Imonet uh, initiative, but also we get genetic information, which is much more than we had before. What, what kind of this information, what, how can we use it in science? How can we use it as an early warning system to understand the system? So all that will be addressed in the healthy, healthy coast and seas objectives. So in a nutshell, I would say bonus three, a healthy seas and coast will put forward all necessary scientific information to address the functions of marine ecosystem, what drive these functions and deliver indicators when we lose these functions that are critical for human mankind. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for this uh, uh, excellent overview on the healthy seas and coasts and how bonus can really contribute towards, uh, uh, to, towards this uh, objective, uh, Christoph. Next, I would like to move on to uh, Dennis Lisberg, who has been uh, especially involved in the development of the Sustainable Blue Economy Strategic Objective. Good morning, Dennis. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sustainable Blue Economy is high on the political agenda and will play a critical role in achieving Europe's green goal. In other words, there is no green without the blue. What do you think are the most pressing challenges for the Baltic Sea and the North Sea region to achieve the sustainable blue economy and how Bano Sria is geared to ful fulfill these ambitions? Yeah, thank you very much for, the, for this question. I mean, it's a very huge question that you are asking me and, and you are absolutely Right, I think uh, as mentioned that you cannot have the green without the blue is uh, really a part of the green deal. I mean, the green deal wants to make sure that we are utilizing the resources most ef effectively and circular. It wants to restore the biodiversity and cut pollution and also to make us carbon neutral by 2050. And especially that last part is really now um, visible and putting pressure on our uh, um, seas here in, in Europe and especially in North Sea and, and the Baltic area because we, they, we want to use the space for energy, renewable energy uh, uh, activities. And um, in, in, in we want to increase it by, I think it's like a, a 20-fold or 30-fold here in, in Europe. And it was become very clear, at least here in Denmark, when doing the first maritime special plans, that uh, huge areas are now set aside for energy use. And we're now discussing building two artificial islands, one in the North Sea and one in the Baltic area. So it's very clear that there's now this kind of competition for space taking place in order to develop the economy at sea. And in those spa uh, spatial plans, it was also clear that fisheries and agriculture are more or less put into the areas left over for these other new exciting uses that uh, the government has foreseen. So I really see that the, this type of displacement is an issue that we need to bring up and also um, look into in the new plans that uh, when, they, when they are being revised. And uh, that is mentioned also in this in the SRIA. And as uh, Christoph and Petra uh, focused on, the basis for utilizing the space and utilizing the resources is the ecosystem-based approach to the management. So it's really key in order to, the, to utilize the, the resources sustainable that we take that approach. 
And in that, as Petra also mentioned, it's really important that it is an integrative and iterative uh, approach that we are uh, uh, doing to, uh, to, to do this. So besides competing for the space, it's also about utilizing the resources. And we both have non-living and living resources in our area that can be utilized. And there's an increased pressure on the non-living resources to extract, for example, sand and gravel, but also to look at if it's possible to use the ferromanganese um, deposits in, in, in the area. So there's a lot of pressure to utilize this. So we definitely need to, some new decision-making tools and predictive models in order to understand what will then be the impact of doing this. And for the living resources, I mean, we have been uh, having a, a, a management of our living resources for years, but we are still have some uh, species that we are not really uh, traditionally used that we potentially can use for something. And we also see that there's a huge potential actually to produce more uh, resources, living resources in our oceans. So that could be like low trophic organisms or, but also just go beyond the, some of the traditional fin fish that we are actually producing in the area. And then as uh, uh, I think Christoph mentioned, when doing the, the management of our resources, fisheries resources, all these new possibilities uh, of getting data from our oceans also makes it possible to have adaptive management so that you can really go in and uh, look at uh, some short-term uh, closures or whatever, but also to manage these on with the long-term effects that might happen due to climate change. And to develop the economy, it's definitely also about having the products in the end and have some value chains that make sure that we get as much value added out of the resources that we extract from, from our seas. And in that, there's definitely a lot to do still in the supply chain in terms of the logistics and the processing and the, to ensure the shelf life, but also to use biotechnology to get new uh, new products, new pharmaceutical or cosmetic products. And in, in that process of uh, extracting more marine resources for our use, we need to also consider the circularity. And that's not only in the marine realm, but also how it integrates with our food system in general and in the use of our resources on land. So we need to also consider this land sea interaction in the circularity. And that is just some of the aspects that are highlighted in the in the year on the blue economy side, which I think are important. And I know as, as we will come back to the new partnership uh, that will uh, develop here in Horizon Europe will could be a vehicle for, for getting this CIRA out and, and working. And as we have discussed and will discuss probably is that many of these challenges need to be uh, tackled on the regional scale. So it really is on the sea basin level that you will need to tackle some of these issues, even though that some of the challenges might be shared among the regional seas. So I think that's a key aspect for the new partnership to take this regional aspect into consideration. So I think I'll stop here, thank you. Great, thank you very much, Dennis, for this, uh, yeah, you managed to uh, squeeze in the sustainable blue economy in a very, very uh, good nutshell. Thank you for that. Let's move on to uh, Heini then, uh, who has been involved in the development of the uh, strategic objective, uh, human well-being. Heini, in the scientific community, the link between the marine ecosystem goods and services to human well-being has already been acknowledged for some time. In your opinion, what should be done uh, to properly factor in the value of the ecosystem services for human well-being and how the outcomes of the Barnostria would support this? Thank you, Carolina. Um, and thank you for the opportunity to be here in the launch of the, of the new Barnostria. Um, so in principle, I think we all know that biodiversity and ecosystems are very important to human well-being. 
and uh, as one aspect of implementing the ecosystem approach. It's also increasingly important to measure that importance in quantitative terms so that we can show, show this link. And uh, one of the concepts, uh, ecosystem services concept, provides an approach for conceptualizing, measuring, and valuing that importance also in monetary terms. And this in turn enables showing how the use and protection of the marine environment impacts human well being and society. And uh, it also enables assessing the value of changes uh, in ecosystems in a comparable way to the value of other assets and activities. So then we can make natural capital and natural assets uh, comparable to other kinds of assets. And um, the value of natural capital, ecosystem services, and also marine biodiversity should be considered in marine policies to properly reflect the benefits uh, from ecosystems to society and human well-being and the value of environmental impacts. And what this requires is an improved inclusion and integration of social and economic sciences in marine ecosystem assessments and policy decisions. And to answer these challenges, uh, bonus outcomes under uh, this specific objective three C3, understanding the benefits of ecosystem goods and services as sources of human well-being. Um, uh, those outcomes will provide uh, approaches and new knowledge for integrated assessments of the marine environment that link ecosystems with socio-economic systems. They cover all the elements in the chain from drivers to human activities, pressures, state of the environment, ecosystem services, and finally, economic welfare and human well-being. The second thing that this will provide are spatially and temporally explicit information on the contribution of ecosystem services to human well being to better support policies. And finally, also approaches and applications of marine ecosystem accounting are developed to incorporate ecosystem services to national account, accounts. Uh, further, the other specific objectives under strategic objective. C, human well-being, will investigate safe food and feed, as well as safe and accessible coast as sources of human well-being. So overall, uh, overall, this uh, strategic objective on human well-being will provide really broad and extensive information on how ecosystem biodiversity, the state of the ecosystem, affect and contribute to human well-being. Uh, altogether, these outputs from the BANAS strategic research and innovation agenda make visible and quantify the importance of the ecosystem to human well-being uh, to support the implementation of the ecosystem-based approach and also effective and efficient marine policies that we all, we all want and need to more effectively protect uh, the marine environment. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Haini, for your reflections actually bring us to the most important question. The three, I, I would like to, to remind once again, the three hierarchic levels of policy making, which are represented here by Gert, uh, Rudiger and Ivan. And I want to ask all three gentlemen uh, one cornerstone question. In which ways this agenda, this research and innovation agenda, uh, of the Baltic and the North Sea will allow us to move closer to the goal of policy making well informed by scientific evidence. And let us start uh, uh, with the national level. Gert, your, your uh, floor is yours. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. And thanks for inviting me, having me. Uh, congratulations to the Banos team. I think it's a very interesting, useful document, the, the new Surya. And uh, it demonstrates, I think, how much we have in common across Europe and the northwestern part of Europe in, in, in terms of challenges that we need to address for marine and maritime affairs. Um, we have in Belgium and Flanders, I mean, Belgium is the country, Flanders is the region. We both have responsibilities in this regard. And we, we think an, an agenda is a really um, a, a cultural product that can inform not just the research and innovation community, but clearly reflects the interests of all stakeholders, uh, policymakers, uh, public actors, the 
economic sectors as well and so on. So basically it's a structuring element in our, our joint enterprise to uh, live up to the ambitions of the, also the policy at higher level. And just to mention the, the Green Deal and, and the upcoming mission. So for us, I think we have a, we have a lot uh, to benefit from international cooperation within these sort of common agendas. Whether this is now being implemented in this, at the scale of Europe with the partnership or whether it's at the sub-regional level with some uh, additional uh, constructs of uh, initiatives. Uh, I mean, we, we are always willing to uh, seek how we can best um, valorize our resources in, in research and innovation. So the I think the structuring of, of the landscape is, is very important. In Flanders, we, I think we have many research and innovation actors. Basically this morning, we woke up to the, to the happy news also that Belgium is in the, the latest scoreboard of the European Commission is now among the innovation leaders. This I think is the first time it happens. So, and our government also has a policy, our Flemish government that is uh, to start looking north more in terms of cooperation and research and innovation is clearly one of the fields where our government thinks this is uh, something that that can benefit uh, all of us. Now, the agenda is, of course, the needs we need to investigate a lot, and there is a lot of complexity in marine systems and to address the challenges that are ever more complex, the, the answers need to be ever more sophisticated. But I would like to conclude by saying we see a development in research and innovation that we need to answer many more of the how questions, like Christoph said at the beginning. I think it's not so much just to gather knowledge, but it's how this knowledge uh, can help us solve the problems. And I think this is one of the big challenges ahead that the translation into action, actionable knowledge is uh, what we're looking for through this agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gerd, uh, for, for this. I, I would like at this point, I would like to, to uh, remind once again that the questions and answers uh, facility is open, although we are running a little bit behind the shadow, but I think it will not be a big sin if we, if we run this, this event a couple of minutes longer, not more, but a couple of minutes. So if there are any, any important questions you would like to ask to, to our speakers, Petra, Christoph, Dennis, Haney, uh, Gert, uh, Rudiger, and Ivan, uh, please, please type your, your question in the in the question and answer answer window. But I would like now to give floor to to the next higher policy level, which is macro regional level, which is regional sea basin level, and and we have, uh, as already mentioned in the beginning, we have Rudiger Strempel, the executive secretary of the Baltic Sea Environmental Commission, Helsinki Commission, with us today. Rudiger, please. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much for having me. And I'd like to begin by echoing Geert and, and everybody else who's done so and congratulating the bonus team on an excellent document, which I think uh, will prove highly useful and beneficial in the future. And we're looking forward to working with this, of course. Now, um, as you all know, HELCOM is a platform for policy science interaction. But while we like to think that we're pretty good at the policy part of the equation, we have only limited mandate and capacity for proper scientific research. This is something we ourselves cannot undertake. And therefore we need to rely on others for necessary scientific underpinnings. And this of course is where BANAS comes in because BANAS is a major enabler for policy science interaction in the Baltic Sea region and in the Baltic and North Sea region. BONUS has been instrumental in supplying the latest science on a wide array, uh, a wide array of Baltic Sea environmental matters to various HELCOM processes, including the Baltic Sea Action Plan and the Baltic Sea Action Plan update, which as you know, is ongoing at the moment. And we will be adopting the updated Baltic Sea Action Plan at our ministerial meeting in October of this year. And the Baltic Sea Action Plan or BSAP is, you could say, our Bible. And the uh, bonus policy briefs were not only used by HELCOM itself, but also by some of our contracting parties to inform national policies on matters they touch on. <clears throat> and some bonus projects submitted 
concrete action proposals to be included in the BSAP, which shows you how close the interlinkages are. So at Helcom, we're looking forward to the continuation of our relationship with one of the region's leading science enablers, because BANUS will certainly play a major role in current and future Helcom processes. And we welcome the expansion into our sister basin, as you could say, the North Sea. Um, and as you know, um, our contracting parties regularly remind us that Helcom should be cooperating with our sister seas in Europe and even beyond. And of course the North Sea is uh, the closest one, but also the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea come into this. Well, why is this important actually? If you look at the Helsinki Convention, we have a definition uh, of the Western boundary of the Baltic Sea. And that definition says the parallel of the SCA and the Skagerrak at 57 degrees, 44.43 minutes North. Now that is a boundary that means something to us humans, but we also know that boundaries at sea are in a way even more illusory than boundaries on land. And certainly species are blissfully unaware of any of these boundaries and pass freely between North, North Sea and, and the Baltic Sea basins. And nutrients, hazardous substances and other pressures are equally unfazed by political or geographical definitions. And this of course explains why we need to cooperate and why it's beneficial for us to cooperate. And indeed many, though not necessarily all pressures are common to both the Baltic Sea and the North Sea, such as climate change, eutrophication, acidification, underwater noise or oil spills. When it comes to the scale of our future work and to solving our own issues, will therefore inevitably have to look towards the North Sea as well. Both seas are in the same biogeographical region and are connected, which leads to a natural exchange and migration of um, biota between them. On the other hand, we also have to acknowledge that the challenges faced by the Baltic Sea do differ from those experienced in other regional seas. A global one size fits all approach therefore is not going to be the most effective strategy. For example, eutrophication and its sources largely remain a very specific Baltic Sea issue, and the effects of climate change may be different here from those in other regional seas. Look at the Mediterranean, for instance, which doesn't have any winter sea ice cover and has a completely different species composition. But even in a much closer sea, in the southern part of the North Sea, if you look at the, uh, the, the Wadden Sea, which I've worked with for many years in the past, which has a very specific situation, a very specific species composition and very specific problems, which are different, of course, from those in the Baltic Sea. Now, for the Baltic Sea, when it comes to achieving the objectives set by global and regional frameworks, such as those specified under the SDGs or the EU's Marine Strategy Framework uh, Directive, we need to think global, locally, both globally and locally, and embrace a regional approach that's certainly guided by the targets of the overarching frameworks, but that also allows for the development of region-specific actions aimed at our very own issues, such as, for instance, eutrophication, the Baltic's number one pressure. So to tackle regional problems, we need regional solutions and frameworks. BANUS and Helcom are some of the ideal vehicles for considering global and EU-level environmental objectives and targets and incorporating them into regionally relevant solutions. The strategic main themes of the Bono Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda, SRIA, of healthy seas and coasts, sustainable blue economy and human well-being are not only aligned with the current global considerations about our oceans and seas, but they also fit Helcom like a glove, especially in light of the fact that they're all based on the ecosystem approach, which is of course a key element of our own Helcom process. So for Helcom, Bana, Sria is of particular relevance as we're currently developing our own Helcom science agenda in order to be able to understand and better respond to new or pressing challenges that will require our attention in the near future. Our respective science agendas will be of mutual interest to both Bonus and Helcom and the Helcom science agenda will not only support the, de uh, the development of Helcom activities, but also help to inform external partners about research needs of Helcom and the Baltic Sea region. By cooperating with BANUS during the early stages of the development of our respective agendas, we can ensure that we develop the most relevant tools for both of our organizations. And therefore, I wish you a very successful launch of the Joint Strategic Research and Innovation um, Agenda for the future, and look forward to continuing our fruitful cooperation. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Rudiger. Yes, indeed, you are. Thank you very most most uh, thankful we are for for you highlighting in the beginning the the concept of the sister seas, uh, which which we have to justify in the beginning when this direction was uh, selected by by the partners of 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 Barnos, but also the importance of the regional macro regional regional sea uh, basin approach. This is something which which comes very very urgent and very topical now in the context or in the discussions about how the future sustainable blue economy partnership will will be designed and and we uh, the Barnos representatives we, we we don't hesitate in these discussions always to to repeat that that we are uh, we see that the optimal construction of the of the partnership would be as as a partnership of partnerships because the regional seas are are the unit elemental units where the where the good environmental status is decided and where sustainability of marine ecosystem services are decided. I would like as as a last but certainly not least in our row of presentation of, of the of the ref for policy level reflections, I would like to give floor to our long term supervisor from from the, the European Commission, Ivan Conesa Alcolea. Ivan, you have been with us in bonus times and you also continued to be our supervisor in, in, in the preparation of, of Barnos research and innovation agenda. Please, a few words from you. Thank you, Andres. Uh, thank you, Carolina, and uh, good morning to all. Uh, yes, indeed, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, because it's on the, the, the increasing uh, 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 development uh, since the Banos time, uh, remember in FP6, uh, Eranet, and uh, all the momentum built and the, the great cooperation enabled and the results already uh, we could witness. Uh, yes, I remember the, the question is more like uh, for me dealing with the uh, development of the uh, European partnership. And you know, during the, the last year, there's been a considerable work for elaborating on this proposal uh, for a sustainable blue economy partnership under Horizon Europe. And as you know, and as it has been recorded earlier, the main rationale for this is, uh, partnership is to build on the, all this legacy, all this momentum built uh, on the no existing sea basins initiative all over Europe. In order to develop a um, novel arcing structure uh, to avoid further duplications and to align further the, the research programs and resources and to then increase uh, the impact of uh, such transnational initiative and as well as to uh, uh, profit better all these regional seas uh, uh, entities. We have since the last decade we need the development of the Atlantic Research Alliance. Uh, the Galway Statement, the Belém Statement, uh, the Blue Med Initiative, and more recently the Black Sea. And probably the most ripe, uh, not probably, undoubtedly, the most ripe and advanced of these civil scenes is the Dr. Bonus. And now uh, uh, its uh, development through uh, its enlarging to the, 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 the North Sea uh, Basin. From this payment and built our seas of Europe, uh, in different sea basins, the partnership is taking all these dots, all this uh, structure, all this uh, sea basins research agenda. Uh, a little bit of uh, update for, or <clears throat> wrapping up what happened. So, uh, you know, like a core drafting team has been working since last year and uh, um, involving consultation of uh, other member states uh, together with this drafting team in associated countries. And they produce a high level strategic research agenda for this uh, partnership. And uh, of course, the bonus, uh, bonus representative was uh, involved in these consultations and uh, in the development of this strategic uh, research agenda for the partnership proposal. Also, next to the individual uh, commitment from the, the Baltic and North Sea countries. Um, so, this uh, research agenda has been developed, um, but not yet approved by a formal partnership governing body, but it's there. The call uh, for the sustainable blue economy has been already incorporated in the work program uh, of Russian Europe, which has been uh, 
published the 15th of June, but uh, uh, but uh, for a more precise, uh, more precisely, sorry, the the call for the sustainable public partnership will be open on the 28th of October this year. And this uh, research agenda uh, developed for the partnership will be the basis for the implementation plan and the annual, the first annual work program that need to be incorporated in the proposal that will be submitted to this call. So still, uh, discussion is still going on for uh, uh, the governance of the partnership, in particular uh, on which country will actually be the coordinator of the grant agreement and into submitting the proposal. Uh, and under the coordinator, the share of work is still open between the different pillars of the partnerships uh, and the different other activities. Uh, obviously, the regional sea basins, uh, like food hubs, are considered as potential uh, uh, governance elements for uh, the partnership and uh, as reflected in the consortium. And uh, on small, it could be even more uh, helpful in establishing close links the, with the regional sea basins conventions in order to achieve the expected uh, uh, outcome on sounds based uh, implementation of the policies at the level, but also at the discrete uh, needs uh, enshrined by this convention. So, BANOS, uh, through its strong asset of transnational cooperation, uh, uh, the strong experience coming from bonus uh, from the Iranet, Iranet Plus, and the Article 185, and the strong experience of bonus EIG uh, in the research programming uh, implementation uh, in terms of science, financial, and communication, and knowledge management is a definite strength for uh, the partnership and uh, as a potential provider. And I really invite you to make uh, the case among your partner the other to, to, uh, to provide and to so that they welcome the best practices and I mean, the role model uh, bonus and bonus can have in terms of uh, program management. Uh, synergies have been recognized uh, also with uh, uh, in the SARA uh, of this partnership uh, with the mission uh, restore our ocean and waters by 2030, uh, for which I would like also to emphasize uh, the importance. Uh, Horizon Europe yeah, uh, developed this new uh, approach, missions, uh, one of the big abilities of uh, the new framework program, to speed up the uh, what we call like our earlier of the actionable knowledge and to link it with other policies. Uh, not necessarily research science, but that we use the science base and, uh, and, and uh, the transformation, the application to really implement them and to get some tangible results by 2030. Other synergies are important to underline, and you know that there's other partnerships uh, proposal in the area, 49, but there's several ones already also identified uh, to be more closely linked and uh, for cooperation, uh, I would say, the, of course, the Water for All partnership, uh, the Clean Energy Transition partnership, uh, and very importantly, the Biodiversity partnership, address land and, and water and seas uh, ecosystems, and as well as the food partnership, as well for the, 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 the living resources from the sea. So it's an uh, ambitious uh, frame, but also very, uh, maybe a unique step for a big leap for for being having a accessible uh, science and reaching uh, tangible impacts which aim to really implement the green deal objective launched by the, the new commission uh, last uh, in 2019 and uh, uh, i'm confident that we have all the assets made by uh, um, provided by banos a bonus first because of all experience gathered there the infrastructure you have and the skills you have um, I'm very confident like, uh, for Banos, uh, it will be a key, a key uh, component of this partnership, and especially in terms of implementation uh, capacity, uh, with all the lessons we can provide. Well, I will finish here maybe because I think we have a bit of time. But thank I would like you. to congratulate for your great, great job. You, Ivan, thank you uh, very much for, for the good words. And of course, as, as you said, all, all eyes are now on, on Horizon Europe. 
the, the first calls and of course the, the development of the partnerships and most of all uh, from marine and maritime sci scientists and in, in, in innovators the, the hopes are for the development of the sustainable blue economy partnership and we are very much looking forward to it. And of course, we are very much hoping that that what what is now developed in in the in the Bano CSA in general and what is embedded in this research and innovation agenda will be useful in the implementation of the partnership. Of course, uh, we have received a couple of questions through the through the questions. And yes, answers. we had we had few uh, two two questions and time is our enemy here and I hope that everybody is able to uh, stay with us just for a few few extra minutes. We will uh, keep the the remaining session uh, very very short. Um, there is a question from Arno uh, Rosmarin about uh, the impact of the funding or the funding level uh, for the coming future. Unfortunately, we can't give you an exact answer here. The, the funding landscape is still very dynamic. So the Sustainable Blue Economy Partnership is being uh, shaped at the moment. So uh, this to answer this question uh, is unfortunately uh, not feasible, feasible at the moment. So let's move on to the, the question which was asked by Mike Elliott. Mike is also an advisory board in, uh, member in the uh, Banos um, CSAs and, and uh, Mike writes, greetings uh, to Andres and all Banos friends. Um, as well as the SDG 14 link, uh, links the SRIA adds to what is be being uh, what is being called a super year of the ocean. With the start of the UN decades, uh, decades for the ocean and ecological restoration, the G7 Future of the Ocean Initiative, UNAP Gems Ocean, COP26 and COP15 and of, of uh, global uh, the, the biodiversity directive, the launch of the World Ocean Assessment to Future Coast, etc., etc. How can we ensure the successful links with all of these by Banos to add to the individual national um, uh, initiatives? And indeed, this is a very lengthy and timely, timely uh, question um, question here. And um, from uh, from my perspective. I could add that uh, that the Banos uh, impact enabling strategy strategies will be a key a key here to have uh, 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 an efficient communication strategy, engagement with the society, engagement with the local uh, citizens, also um, uh, through citizen science activities, but ocean ocean literacy, etc., uh, etc. Et I don't know if any of our panelists would like to add to this answer uh, very briefly, or um, if there are no uh, burning uh, additions, then I suggest that we will... Hert would like to add. Yes, please. Hert, please. Yes, thank you. Um, it's a very good question because all of these things are happening simultaneously. And I think community building within the research and innovation, marine and maritime research and innovation uh, sector is also an important contributor to making the right links. We try to use all our collaborative platforms also as communication channels and to, to um, make people match uh, their interests. To, so I think this is not just about involving citizens and society, but also community within the actors of the research and innovation scene. Thank you. Certainly. Very good addition there, uh, Gert. Thank you very much. Would any of the other panelists like to add anything or we will move on to the uh, final part of the uh, panel discussion. So just to conclude very, very briefly, I would like to uh, ask all our panelists today and I suggest for convenience we will go in the same order as as the, the presentations of the panelists went uh, uh, from, from today. So first Petra, then the drafting team members, followed by our uh, policy and uh, the funders. Um, please state um, your one wish of how you see Banostria best used and implemented in future. Just one take home message for each of the, uh, each of our uh, uh, participants here today. So Petra first, then followed by Christoph. Thank you. Oh, if Petra is not there, then I suggest that we will go. Uh, Christoph, I see you are uh, ready. So please go first and then we go to Dennis. Thank you. Yes, I could, could do that. I, so my, my one wish is that this, this bonus really makes clear that it's not 
just about nature protection. It's, it's about us. And I think we have to see the coastal seas as the key areas to tackle climate change as the major challenge for, for, for us. And here, I think uh, the bonus ria will make a difference and how and in which way we can make best use of the coastal sea. So this would be my one wish. Thank you. Dennis? Yeah, no, it, I think it's great to see that here on the European scale that the, the strategy, the biodiversity strategy, and also the new uh, sustainable blue economy strategy that just has come, come out. All of these are sort of putting emphasis on the same kind of uh, uh, the, the same direction that we are heading. And the funding lines also in Europe is also aligning so that you can utilize these funding lines in order to make that push. And I think that makes also both the policies, the money, and also us researchers uh, uh, able to go in the same direction. And I see the Shira could be the vehicle to actually do that. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. Haley, please. Uh, thanks. So what I would like to see are many interdisciplinary cross-regional projects uh, that address the bonus research questions uh, that also engage policymakers and integrate different uh, disciplines so that we can uh, design and implement more effective and efficient marine policies and measures to achieve good environmental status of the marine environment and uh, show also broadly the impacts on human well-being. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Haney. And now let's go to our policy representative's hat. Do you have anything to add to what was said already? Uh, well, just very, very briefly. I think we have uh, a role for competition and we have a role for collaboration. And my wish is to know when we need to compete and when we need to collaborate. We very often need to collaborate. Thank you. <laughs> You are right. You are absolutely right. And I have heard the word competition, actually. <laughs> so, right. Uh, and and uh, Helcom, Rudiger, uh, what would be your answer to this question? How, how you, you, you wish uh, to see the bonus three are best used and implemented in the future? Thanks. Thanks, Andres. So you asked for one wish, and I'm going to take advantage of this by um, formulating a wish that has three elements, actually. So first of all, um, I hope that we'll be able to make best possible use in this context of a vibrant uh, science and research community that we have in our region and in our regions actually. And secondly, that we can leverage the synergies from cooperation between uh, the Baltic Sea and the North Sea, and also of course from other sister seas, learn from each other. Um, and uh, some of the, the key words have already been mentioned. We heard about integration. Um, it has to be an iterative process. It has to be inclusive and cross-disciplinary. I think all of these things will, will be very vital in bringing this to fruition. And uh, then, of course, and I think this is really the most important element, that I hope we continue to integrate the solid scientific basis that we're generating into our policymaking. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Rudiger. And we come to our, our last speaker, Ivan. Uh, would you have any, any, any far, uh, farewell words to, to, to tell to our, our team? Yeah, OK. Uh, so, um, I will not repeat. I will completely align with uh, what Christoph and Denise uh, and Gerd said earlier. Uh, and uh, like uh, this SRA and the uh, development of these transnational programs and research uh, and these alignments we see in the strategies are really pushing toward actionable science and the transformative change uh, that had been introduced by the IPBS report in 2019. And I would like also for uh, the second for implementation, like uh, of course more flexibility in for the, from the national program to be able to, to do the joint funding of activities, uh, to take the lessons learned from the bonus uh, experience and how also movement can be made in, in national funding programmation to better work with other programs. And last but not least, I really wish to see the same management team and structure uh, as bonus EHG being able to participate in this uh, implementation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ivan. And, and now it's time to conclude. Or do yes. we have anything on the in the questions line? Uh you can just upload the, the final uh, slide while I'm speaking. 
So there has been one more question in the in the chat. Uh, are you planning a kind of side event at the Banos for the Baltic Sea Science Conference in Aarhus in, in October? Uh, yes, we are planning to have presence uh, it, at the at the conference. So um, some of us, depending of course on the situation, we don't know what the situation in the autumn is. Uh, but there will be Banos presence at the uh, at the uh, conference, and the schedule is being uh, finalized uh, at the moment. But for now, I would just like very much to thank you for your participation. It has been a pleasure to have have all of you here on online. I would like to uh, note that the Banos Ria will be downloadable today from our from our website. So please go have a look, download, uh, and if you have any questions, you are always more than welcome to uh, get back to us. And we have some limited hard copy editions available. So for interest in this, please uh, contact Tina here in the in the office. And the final words then to Andres. Well, my final words will just be th thank you, everybody, each and every once again. Thank you for joining us today on this remarkable day. And uh, thank, of course, many, many thanks to all. Uh, we counted something like 200 people who have been involved in, in the process of developing of this RIA. A very detailed, uh, very, speci very specifically resolved SRIA, uh, the SRIA which, is, uh, which has actually an embedded mechanism for, for achieving the impact, which Kara already mentioned, and also which has embedded mechanism of updating. And, and please note these, these uh, uh, links which you see on, uh, on the screen uh, and, and, and keep following the, the Banos news and also the news of the Baltic Sea Science Congress this autumn. Thank you very much and have a, a wonderful summer. Mm -hmm.